Hey, this is Scott, and today I'm doing a five minute review of this, the Snapa Kylan M. This is a pretty unique gimbal in some ways, but it's also very simple. So I thought this would be the perfect chance to start off this new series of five minute reviews. In these five minute reviews, my goal is to keep things short, sweet, and to the point, organized, but balanced and honest. And of course, most importantly, under five minutes. In these videos, I will start off with a quick introduction to the product that I'm reviewing, in this case, the Snapa Kylan M. And I'll hit on some of the points, some of the features that are kind of neutral in terms of you know, not really being pros nor cons, just things that I wanna highlight. And then I will move on to the things that I liked, and the things that I disliked, and I will try my best to touch on things that I haven't really heard other reviewers talking about too much. After that, I'll finish it up with a summary of kind of why and who I would recommend this for if I do recommend it. Of course, not all my reviews from here on in will be in this new five minute format. Naturally, some things call for a more in-depth approach, uh, but as much as possible, I do want to continue this series because I think it's a great way to bring more information to you even though the videos are shorter, I think people will be more likely to stick around for the entire review than they will be for the more longer ones that kind of tend to drag on a bit. So anyway, long story short, here we go for the Snapa Kylan M. The Kylan M is a gimbal made for lightweight cameras up to 1300 grams, and it has the unique ability to twist the handle into a briefcase style carry position. It's compact, simple, and all metal with the ability to connect to and control your camera to start and stop recording and even zoom depending on your camera's compatibility. The 12 hour runtime is average, but the batteries are removable, meaning you can have multiple sets for longer use, and you are able to charge your camera from the gimbal if your camera is compatible with that. The clip you saw on the opening of this video, which I'll also show right now, was entirely shot on the Kylan M with a Panasonic GH4 and 12 to 35 f2.8 lens. And although it was in slow motion, I'll show the real time clips and some behind the scenes shots from that shoot as well throughout this video. I love that you can fit this in the case without readjusting the arms. It's a small detail, but with most gimbals, even for smartphones, you'll have to close up the arms when packing it away, meaning you'll need to completely rebalance it when you take it out again. That's not the case here, and it does make things quicker and easier. The twisting handle is a cool idea. You get something like a briefcase style carry design without having to attach anything additional. It can definitely help to keep a solid grip on the gimbal at certain angles while still being very compact. It feels well made overall, and I wouldn't worry about it even if it does take some abuse. I also kind of like that there's no quick release plate. It might sound strange, but for my DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, I personally don't like keeping plates on the body, so being able to screw the camera directly into the gimbal itself with a self-retaining screw makes things easier and faster for me. That may not apply to everyone, of course, but it's one less step and one less part to worry about. There's no LCD screen, so you're stuck remembering what the lights mean in terms of which follow mode you're in. Changing follow modes is also using the same sliding button as the power, and it's simply cycling through three modes, which can take some getting used to since there's not a dedicated mode button like most gimbals. It does work fine though once you get used to it. Although the twisting handle design is a good idea in theory, I found that the center of balance was off because the handle comes out behind the gimbal and not above it, meaning you still have to grip it really close to the center where it's a little bit cramped and it's close to the motor in order to feel nice and balanced. I just felt like this point was so close to being a good idea, but it ended up being a bit of a gimmick because of that. I actually felt like there was a little bit more stress on my grip and a little bit more shakiness introduced because of that center of balance being off, and I probably wouldn't actually use it in most situations. Maybe others have found this more useful and lighter camera setups might possibly be better, but I just didn't feel like it was as comfortable as I hoped it would be. The stabilization wasn't the best I've seen. There is still a decent amount of shake if you're not careful, and things like slow motion, IS, and stabilization in post will probably be necessary in a lot of cases to get the smoothest footage. You can fine tune things like motor strength in the app, and that is fairly easy to do, but even so, just I feel like I've seen better. So this is a tough one to be honest with you, especially because there's so much competition in the market and it's all very well priced now, the prices are coming lower and lower. And the biggest selling point for this was the fact that it had that twisting handle design, which like I mentioned, left me a little bit disappointed. Of course, there's the balance issue where you have to kind of grip it really close to the motor to get that center of balance the way that it would be comfortable to hold. But on top of that, if you wanna put it down between shots, you also have to either turn the power off and lay it down on the ground, or if you're using a mini tripod, which is not included, you would have to straighten out the handle just to put it down. So in some ways, it's not as convenient as I had hoped it would be, but you know, for some people, for some situations, it could definitely still be a plus. So you're gonna to have to think about how that would work for you. 
As I mentioned, it also is, of course, very, very quick and easy to put away and get set up again and get going. So if you're in a running gun type situation where you need that speed, this could be a very, very good choice. The app is also very easy to use. It's easy to navigate. The build quality is here. So if you are okay with being a little bit more careful in your technique in terms of uh, getting smooth footage, like I said, you're gonna need to rely a little bit more on IS or maybe post stabilization and of course your technique, uh, but you can get around those things. So if you do like the other features that this has, despite the downfalls, then I think it could still be a good choice, but just be aware of all of the kind of pros and cons that this does have before you get into it. And there it is, that's my first five minute review. I hope that it was a good and quick way to kind of get the most amount of information to you in the shortest amount of time. Hopefully you kind of walk away from this feeling like you know this gimbal a little bit better and maybe have a good idea of if it will be a good match for you or not. Um, if you want to see more of these in the future, let me know down below. And also if you have any questions or comments, let me know down there as well and I will do my best to get back to you. If you like this video or found it helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, share it if you can. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more in the future. And as always, thank you for watching.